maybe you can give us a little taste of what some of these things are. You know, quantum computing, man, back when we got our degrees, I don't remember hearing that phrase. I don't think that was a thing at the time, but now it sounds like it could potentially change the game with multiple orders of magnitude faster. I mean, how would you explain that to the layman and, and what is it, what are the implications for the future? Right. Well, when you and I were uh, at school, uh, I'm sure you remember the same. Most of the computing systems were, were driven off of these large mainframes. You know, you had, to, you had to get time from the computer lab to work with your code. It was extremely inconvenient, and it took forever for relatively simple programs to run. I remember sleeping overnight in the computer lab just to get my, you know, results for the next day. It was, it was truly <laughs> awful. I'd love to go back to school now for that reason. Yeah, the computer... <laughs> I'm giving fl bad flashbacks to the computer lab, you know, like it is a place where people like sleep all night. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's one of those places. Uh, I'd, I'd love to say they were good memories, but <laughs> not really. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, today we've seen, since then, we've seen this um, rapid progression of kind of these traditional von Neumann architecture uh, computing systems that have been keeping pace basically with what's referred to as Moore's law. So the computing power basically doubles every 18 to 24 months and it's held true. And that's because of the uh, advancements in semiconductor technology. Well, what's been happening in recent years is that Moore's law has been slowing down. You know, we've seen this incredible trajectory and now it's starting to flatten off. Things are still improving every couple of years by 15, 20%. Uh, but we're starting to reach a limit in terms of how tiny we can make these transistors. Uh, it'll hold true for several more years, but eventually we're going to reach that cap where it becomes very difficult to, to continue at that pace. And this is where quantum computing comes in. Uh, this is where we see not just an exponential leap, uh, but a real massive jump in computer processing power because suddenly we go from something that's just improving by 20% a year to something that's just improved a million times a year. Um, just for perspective about you know, what uh, a, a, a fully functional user fault tolerant, uh, a universal fault tolerant quantum computer could mean to the world. And so when we think about taking this these incredibly powerful computers and focusing them on very complex problems. These uh, problems that have so many variables that our traditional computers just can't process. Those are the types of problems that we're going to give. We have been giving, in fact, to quantum computers. And so when we think about designing new molecular structures or understanding how proteins are folded and how our bodies interact with them, uh, we meant, you know, we talked about, um, uh, drug discovery and how that will change uh, with the, uh, the advent of quantum computing. And what most people are not seeing yet, and what's incredible is that the functionality of quantum computers is already increasing at an exponential rate. I remember just a few years ago, you know, a quantum computer that had, you know, a few quantum bits, we call them qubits, uh, uh, you know, was a big deal. And then in 2019, when Google achieved quantum supremacy, you know, we had a 53 quantum bits. So going from a couple quantum bits to 53 is beyond exponential growth in a very short period of time. And so what we're going to see this year is quantum computers that have more than 100 quantum bits. And then 2022, we'll see several hundred quantum bits. I think you get what I'm what I'm getting at is that um, quantum computers themselves are already growing at an exponential rate and their ability in terms of computer processing power is far greater than every, the best supercomputers we have on the planet today. It makes it, I bet, difficult as a human to imagine 20 years from now what all that technology will lead up to. I mean, even for a guy as smart as you, Jeff, and as technical and technologically you know, studied as you are, do you ever wonder, like, it's hard for me even to conceive as an organic being what that kind of computing structure could mean to, you know, biotech and all these things? Do you ever think that? I don't know, it just came into my head. Uh, it's absolutely. In fact, um, one of the techniques that I use with myself literally every day is I ask myself a simple question. Are you thinking exponentially? Because we're human. Uh, you know, our DNA is literally programmed to think in a linear fashion. 
You know, we think about going through our days in a very linear scheduled sequence of events. And, uh, you know, we think about the things that we need to achieve, achieve every day in a very linear fashion. And to us, on a day-to-day -day basis, life really doesn't change that much. But that's not true with technological advancement. And it changes much more quickly than even experts will realize. It's something that I've noticed when I speak with PhDs around the world is that they're very focused on their one single area of expertise. I remember having discussions way back in 2016 uh, with people with doctorates in uh, genetics and genetic engineering. And their comments to me were that, oh, this, you know, we really won't see any therapies based on genetic editing for at least 10 years. And I remember telling them how wrong they were, that in fact, we're going to see, you know, the first successful therapy application of genetic editing on a human within 24 months. And it's because they were so focused that they didn't actually see how fast the entire industry was developing. And you know what? We actually did have a cure for beta thalassemia and sickle cell anemia using CRISPR genetic editing technology within that 24 month time frame. I mean, it was extraordinary. So I, yes, I absolutely, I remind myself every day when I look at research or I look at a company or I look at a product or a service, I think, are you looking at this from an exponential perspective? Are you missing the big picture here?